Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to cover a tripod and uh, specifically how to rig a tripod and how to do it safely and effectively. Okay. So as you can see, I've got a basic confined space tripod here, although it's not limited to confined space, but uh, most people would recognize it as such. You've got three legs. Okay, we've got a chain that's uh, making sure the legs don't spread too far apart. And up here, I've got a three attachment points on the head. And right now I've got just this carabiner and a change of direction pulley up here. Okay. All right, so before I show you how to rig this, I wanna show you an easy way to collapse this. Uh, in a bad way okay and this is a common mistake people make and I'm, I just want to show you how easy it is to do this incorrectly and have a catastrophic problem okay so what am I lifting I'm lifting a white oak log weighs about 70 80 pounds and you know we can pretend this is a person um, but it's our, it's our object we're, we're lifting and a classic mistake people make is they come out here they want to pull that person out of that hole or what have you and they just start pulling now watch what happens to my legs on this tripod okay all i gotta do is gently pull on it and it instantly collapses okay all right now if you look down i never even raised the log off the ground and my entire system is collapsing. Um, and if the forces are strong enough on this, imagine this as a giant mousetrap, okay? And this thing's slamming down on somebody. Um, it's, a, it's a very bad day for everyone involved, okay? So let me put this back where it belongs. And I want to talk about why that happened, okay? Whenever we rig a tripod, we have to consider the resultant force, okay? And we really have to pay attention to the footprint of this tripod. And your, your chain or your rope or whatever is gonna hold these legs together, make a handy dandy way of determining your footprint. Okay, so anywhere within this triangle uh, created by this chain is our footprint. Okay, we want our resultant forces inside this triangle. Okay, so how do you determine your resultant? Well, the easiest way is to come up here on your pulley. And I've got one strand going to the load and my other strand here. Okay, whatever angle I create and subsequently whatever angle this pulley goes into determines your resultant okay so if i pull straight down if you bisect these two strands just imagine a straight line through the center of this pulley um, your resultant is going to go straight down straight to your load and ideally that's what you want you want your resultant straight going straight to your load Okay, now what if when I collapsed it, what went wrong? I pulled my rope way out here, okay, and I started pulling. My resultant is right down the center. Imagine a straight line. It's going to go well outside of our triangular footprint, okay? The resultant, when you do that, is probably hitting about where my left foot is right here, okay? And this tripod had no, uh, had no way but to collapse at that point. Okay, so you always have to consider what your resultant force is. Always, um, and if you have to violate staying within the footprint, you have to counteract the resultant force on this tripod. And there's there's ways to do that. Okay, so. Uh, so I'm going to give you several examples here coming up 
and we're going to pay attention to the resultant each time and i'm going to show you why it works okay and this gives you several options on how to use a tripod so stick around for that and i'm going to start with the most basic simplest way first uh, which several of you may be familiar with already but then we're going to progress into harder scenarios okay all right so stick around i'm going to show you how to rig this in different configurations and stay safe okay this is option number one and most people um if they have any dealings with a tripod they're going to be familiar with this setup um this is uh, just a basic four to one configuration. Uh, it's called a hall safe and it has a load capture in it. Okay, so <clears throat> if I pull up, this is my load capture right here. If I pull, it instantly captures the progress and it secures my load. Okay, so if I. Okay, now. <clears throat> let's talk about the resultant here okay where is my resultant uh, this is the best case scenario for this tripod because your your resultant imagine we're splitting this pulley right down the center is going directly straight to our load and not only that it is almost dead center within this footprint of this tripod okay if I, if I pull on this or push and pull it is dead solid okay so i'm gonna step back again and let you look at it this is a hall safe which is nothing more than a four to one mechanical advantage system with a progress capture um, easiest solution you'll ever have uh, for a tripod now that's all well and good unless I'm not able to pull straight down within this footprint. Okay, so we'll have to go to different options <clears throat> in order to facilitate being able to get somebody up or down, uh, up or down inside this uh, tripod. Okay, so what I'm saying is when I'm pulling on this, I'm pulling straight down. Okay, but what if I'm not able to do that? I've got to be outside the footprint. Okay. So again, just like before, the worst thing I can do is start pulling this way, okay? Because um, you become very unstable and you'll probably collapse your tripod again, okay? So I can, you know, I can demonstrate it. See, hopefully you can see that move. It takes very little force to do that, okay? So we have to make sure we're within the footprint and we're pulling straight down. If you follow that rule and you keep everything within this footprint and all your resultants, um, you'll have really good success. Okay. But uh, anyway, this is the hall safe, by far the most common way of using a tripod. If you're a fire company or a rescue company, if you pull the tripod off, uh, you're going to be pulling a hall safe off with it. Okay. Just keep in mind though, you have to operate within the footprint of the tripod okay in order to release it i got this release handle right here remember you always got to pull up first release it and slowly lower your load okay all right that's option number one a uh, very common option uh, it has some limitations and we're going to do some more uh, rigging to show you different ways of using this tripod so stick around okay this is method number two and this assumes you don't have a hall safe and or you can't use a hall safe because you can't be within the footprint of your tripod okay now uh, this is the rigging on this isn't complicated uh, but the something you have to remember is it has to be highly coordinated okay because remember there's a hole underneath that log, right? You know, use your imagination, but um, we can't be playing around with this tripod um, trying to equalize forces and have somebody fall or the tripod fall, okay? So 
you need to get all your rigging in place, which I'm going to go over in a second. And then both teams on both anchors have to, as well as the rescuer on the end of this rope, has to coordinate extremely well, okay? But let's go through parts and the pieces here. All right, well, we got our tripod just like before. We have one pulley up here. And of course our load's going straight down, which is this log right now. But be, just, you know, in the, in the first of the video, I showed you how to easily collapse this tri tripod. It's not collapsing now because there's a counteracting force in this green rope, okay? And this is where the coordination comes into play. If this is a manhole cover, um, this is fairly easy to do because you simply put the manhole cover over so nobody can fall in a hole. And instead of this log, imagine this is your rescuer, okay? And you're gonna hook into your rescuer. He's just gonna wait the system. And the green team and the orange team are gonna coordinate to where whatever his weight is, um, each strand is carrying his weight equally, okay? And how do we know that? We know that because this carabiner right here is completely just plumb, okay, straight up and down. If this were, you know, canted this way or canted to the right, we would know at that point that one of these strands are carrying more of the force. Okay, so, so let's back up a step. Make sure nobody can fall in the hole. We're going to hook our rescuer up to this line. He's going to wait the system gingerly, okay? while the two, the green team and the orange team uh, equalize his weight. And when this carabiner here is in the plumb position and he's weighted this orange rope, we know that he um, is equalized amongst both systems. Okay, so again, this, this works very well, but you have to be coordinated, okay? And you have to be safe about it. And once we know that these two strands are equalized and this, this can't go anywhere, um, then we can take that manhole cover off and we can lower him into the ground, knowing that whatever his weight was, you know, 200 pounds, whatever, um, it's been equalized amongst the, green, the orange and the green. Okay, so let's just go and notice how I tied a uh, poacher's, knot in, poacher's knot into the eye of the, the, uh, the pulley here. Now, your pulley may not be able to facilitate that, um, because of the nature of the eye on it, but um, on this particular pulley, you can. All right, so uh, in that case, if you couldn't do that, I would go up here on this next attachment, okay, and counteract it that way. Okay, so, but ideally, you want to go into the eye of the pulley, because that way you know exactly your, your forces are counteracted. But let's follow this green line. And it's simply a going to the tree. I've got a three to one system on here. Okay, so I can easily adjust this up or down and adjust my prusik to where um, when it's equalized, we can lock it in place. Okay, now also what I want to note is this green line and this orange line are perfectly in line with each other, okay? So they're not um, cattywampus to each other. So they're directly pulling against each other in a direct line. That's very important also. Okay, so that may mean being a little creative with your anchors to get that, achieve that, but that's, that's very important to have. Okay, so let's go over here to our orange. And again, we just have a simple three to one with a prusik or load capture. And anytime you use this system, ideally you always want somebody attending the tension line in case something happens. Uh, but primarily they're just, they're just gonna be on standby. The orange rope here is gonna be your lowering and raising, okay? So if I wanna raise that log, I just, Okay, then sit my press second, it's gonna lock. 
Okay, and if I want to lower, you just lower just like this right here. Okay, so okay, so this is method number two of using a tripod and stabilizing a tripod, but you don't have the option of a hall safe. Okay, now something else I want to show too is. Um, Imagine the log is your rescuer, and this is very common, making that transition from the hole in the ground to solid ground, okay? And some teams make the mistake of raising the rescuer all the way up to the pulley to clear his body out of that hole, and then they got to lower him, this right here, okay? But you don't have to do that, okay? When he gets to the edge of that hole, you can vector down, right? Now watch what I do. Okay, get him out of the hole, bring him over, and lower him on solid ground. Okay, that's much, much quicker, much, much easier than having to haul on lower on the orange rope. Okay, so it's one, one person can do this just like that. Okay, all right, that is method number two. And I'm going to break this down and show you a third method. Uh, which is similar to this, but just a little bit different. And uh, I'll see you on that one. Okay, here's our third version. And it's going to require three single pulleys at the tripod. We're going to have two singles at the top, and then we're going to have a single at the load. Uh, this rope is one rope. And I'm going to back up and discuss something that's important and if you look at the strands here uh, obviously they're coming out at the same height but they're also leaving the pulleys at roughly the same angle okay whenever we set these systems up we want our forces to equalize okay and the angle of the rope coming out is going to matter somewhat so we, we try to match that okay um, in addition to that angle matching we want just like in the last example we want to make sure that this rope is in line with itself okay so again the two forces are opposing each other equally okay now obviously you can be off a little bit and uh, but ideally you're shooting for equal and opposite reactions okay so I've terminated the rope on one end on this anchor right here and our control leg is going to be on this other end and I simply have a three to one haul system set up okay so if I want to raise the log I simply use my three to one okay set my prusik and that's going to hold my load okay i want to lower my load i want to mind my prusik and slowly lower okay now if this were a person on here um it, you know you'd have two or three people on this rope to make sure we could uh, control it but uh in principle that's how we do it okay so basically that's it a three to one on one end a termination on the other basically a two to one in the center your resultant stays in the center of your tripod and it's a good system so that's method three and that concludes uh simple setups of a tripod uh, just always remember your forces involved, uh, where your forces are ultimately going to end up, and if they, if they need to be counteracted, um, before you put a live weight on this, you need to make sure to take that into consideration. Okay, I hope this helps, and hopefully it demystified uh, the tripod and made it a little bit safer for you. See you in the next one. Mm.